Hello everybody, different type of video here, as you can probably tell. Now, let me take you on a journey, where we will start with this. This is the Luna Multiplayer mod, a jank piece of code made by some very smart people that turns this jank piece of code made by some very smart people into a multiplayer game. How does it work? I don't know. But what I do know is how it works on the surface level, I think. Let me explain it to you with the power of MS Paint. I know. Fancy. Basically, one person creates an LMP server with the help of this handy D&D wiki page containing all of the world information. Once you make an LMP server go online, an access link is thrown onto the server list. From there, anybody with the Luna Multiplayer client can see the server, and if the server has no password, or the person has the password, they can join. From here, the specifics don't matter for our story, unless you guys want a video about Luna Multiplayer. Now, why have I told you all of this? Because I had an idea. Well, more like this guy had an idea. The idea? A server without time warp. Now, as you can imagine, time warp is a very funky thing in multiplayer. However, inside the server config files, you can turn it off. So what if you did turn it off? That means everything would take ages. One small problem. Laptop. It can't always have the server open. Why is this an issue? Because time only passes when the server is online, which means if I, or this cool guy, tried hosting the server from a normal computer, it would take even more ages. How do we overcome this? With the help of this bad boy. This man never needs to be turned off, since it is always plugged into power and is powerful enough to run this server. I had set up LMP servers on my laptop before, so this was going to be a lot easier than if I was completely new. The real hard part was that my laptop runs on Windows, and Raspberry Pi OS was a form of Linux. Now, time to buy the Raspberry Pi. After scrolling on Amazon, we found this. Now, we're not sponsored, but it's good, it has everything you need, so... If you're going to do this yourself, or if you're following along, you should probably get this one. A few days later, it arrived. Yo. Okay, guys, so I got a Raspberry Pi for reasons inside was a manual Ooh. some heat sinks for the major chips a case for the Pi an SD card with Raspberry Pi OS installed on it a power cable a carry bag or something an SD card to USB adapter which you can barely see an HDMI to micro HDMI cable and of course the Pi itself the next step was to plug everything in HDMI cable into the TV? Check. Power cable into a random power strip? Check. Ancient mouse which I think witnessed the turn of the millennium? Check. One small issue. I was missing a keyboard. Without a keyboard, I couldn't even get past the account creation screen. So I waited until that night, where I acquired one via perfectly legal means. At this point though, it is about 10 o'clock and I have school tomorrow. Before the Raspberry Pi arrived, I actually did some research on the two types of LMP, the nightly builds and the release builds. The release builds require .NET, a program that does something, I don't know. The nightly builds don't require .NET, which means one less thing to install. However, the wiki says something about choosing the right zip for your OS, but says nothing about where to find these zips. Now, I'm pretty sure these zips were in the releases section of the GitHub page, but I didn't know that at the time. Therefore, with no other option, I resorted to the Discord server. I asked where the zip files are, and then I wait. And wait. Until. We unlock a side character in this whole story. Guy from Lithuania. He thought what I was doing was cool and wanted to know about it. He also told me that I would need to install Mono, another program that does something unknown. With the knowledge and the tools, I got to installing. Now trying to install Mono was a pain in the ass. Nothing after the first step wanted to install because I was missing dependencies or whatever. 
During this process, I had slowly been keeping the possibility of trying to install the release version instead. So finally, after over an hour, I tried installing .NET. It took like 10 minutes. There was still a problem, but I didn't know at the time. With this newfound hubris now in my head, I installed the LMP server zip, extracted the folder, and typed in the start command, .NET server.dll. It didn't recognize the command. All it spat back out was .NET command not found. After googling it and scrolling through some forums, I found the solution. Two lines of code. Export .NET root equals dollar sign home slash dot dot net and export path equals dollar path colon dollar dot net root colon dollar dot net root slash tools. I don't know what they did, but all of a sudden dot net was actually installed properly. Now, time to try it again. It failed. This time, .NET couldn't see server.dll inside the slash home slash mtbean directory. By the way, mtbean is my Raspberry Pi OS username. My redneck way of fixing this was moving all of the LMP server files into slash home slash mtbean. Finally, I typed in .NET server.dll one more time. The text that comes up when a new LMP server popped up this time, which I recognized from my previous server experience. With the server running, the next step was to follow the wiki. The wiki says to close it, go into the XML files, and configure it. So I changed the settings to taste, making the server a science mode server, and doing a whole bunch of other stuff. Finally, I could boot the server back up. After a quick hiccup with Linux not recognizing .NET again, making me put in the two lines of code from earlier, I started the server back up. Now, we can play the second piece of real-time footage I have. Enjoy voiceless cinema. Since then, I have removed the password, meaning that anybody, including you, can download the mod folder in the description, which includes the Luna client, and play on the server right now. Do it! Play on it! Now! Join! Join it! Join the Zara! After this journey, I decided to go on a side quest to get a Minecraft server running. Because why not? After following this tutorial, I got the server up and running very quickly, which means there's nothing noteworthy to say here. There is one issue though, if you aren't on the same Wi-Fi and don't use the private IP address, you can't join. I think this might be because this stupid T-Mobile box with terrible Wi-Fi doesn't allow port forwarding. If anyone has the fix, please tell me. Well, that's the end of this journey, so remember, FISH! There's a video to the left, and there's another video to the right. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye! Guys, this video, I, I was I was really lazy editing this video, so it took like a week. It's like a 10 minute video. Um, if you want to do this by yourself, you should do it. It's fun. Uh, I put all the mods in the description. There's a CCAN mod pack. There's also a zip. And if you don't trust a random kid on the internet, I'm just going to link all of them, all the forums, probably, if, if I'm not too lazy to do that. Okay, bye.